In this video, I'll show you how I made this using this. This is going to be a video about easy ways to incorporate 3D printing into ceramics. I'll be using a printer that I was kindly sent by WeFun or Intina, which is the Tina 2S printer. It's a small desktop 3D printer. They sent it to me for free so I could try it out and make this video. I'll talk more about the printer towards the end. But first I wanted to get into the projects that I had in mind for the printer. Some of you will know that I already have a 3D printer. The one I went with initially is a resin printer where this is a filament printer. And filament printers are much easier to get started with. Filament printers are probably the ones that most people are familiar with where you get a reel of plastic and it's melted by a nozzle and placed bit by bit to form the print as the print head moves around. Resin works slightly differently. You have a vat of liquid resin that gets cured by a screen at the bottom of the print and it's exposed layer by layer and pulled up out of the resin solidifying as it goes. The downside to that is that it's very messy. Each piece needs to be cleaned up the resin itself is horrible stuff, kind of toxic and difficult to deal with. It gives a higher quality print, but the downside is it's not much fun to work with. Whereas this can sit in the corner of the studio and whenever I want to print something with it, it's ready to go with just a minute's warming up. It very easily produces test pieces that are absolutely good enough for the projects that I worked with here. The main project I had in mind is something that I've been thinking about for a while now, a revised version of my test tiles. Some of you will know that the original use that I got the resin printer for was making a mold to slip cast test tiles um, to very specific dimensions and a specific design, and that worked really well but they are relatively plain. Intentionally so initially, but I thought I could have more fun with it. And I just haven't been bothered to set the resin printer back up to go through the whole process again. But I had an idea for how I could make a press mold rather than a slip casting mold using a 3D print. And that was something that I really wanted to try. When I got the printer though, I had a few other things that I wanted to test first because there are actually a lot of different options that you have with 3D printing incorporating into clay. When looking at rollers, there are plenty of designs, some of which are paid and some are free. And I went for a free design that is a repeating leaf pattern. But you can get more sculptural ones. So if you were slab building a clay house, for example, you can find wooden texture, brick texture, tile, etc. And get narrower ones and wider ones. The maximum print size on the Tina 2S is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So you're limited in the size based on that but um, 10 centimeters is fairly wide. Some models come with the handles that you can print as well. Others are just the cylinder with the design on, um, but you can pick a variety of them and they work straight off the printer. So you just print one and roll it over clay. You can do it to slab built or wheel thrown pieces. I threw a couple of coasters on the wheel and then just rolled it over um, once, the, once the clay had firmed up a little bit. With the cookie cutters, again, there are far more paid ones than there are free ones, but there are lots of cool designs available for free. A lot of them will have two parts. Having said that, I'm now not seeing many with two parts. So this was the design that I went for, which in retrospect, a very cool design. The outline is far too complicated. There's loads of nooks and crannies for clay to get stuck which was a bad choice but you can see it's done in two parts of the printer prints in one go but they're not actually attached so you have a middle texture piece and an outer cutter and it gives you the sizes but again you can scale it in the slicing software worked well although limited because of its complexity but again loads of designs a lot of them will have that two part inner pattern outer cutter design For my robot, I built it in Blender and I had two ideas for how I was going to make it work. The first was that I would print the negative shape out of the plastic and I would use that as the press mold and I would press the clay into the plastic. That turned out not to work very well 
because the clay will adhere to the plastic quite readily. You have to end up using lots of talcum powder or cornstarch as a release agent, or you can use cling film, sarin wrap if you're in the States, to line it first and then press down. That works quite well, but you lose a bit of detail. So either you're coating your thing in a powder or you're losing a bit of detail because of the plastic, and that's all to stop the clay from sticking to it. This is where a plaster press mold would work a lot better, but separating plaster and a complex design is difficult because plaster grips onto it so well, and I didn't fancy trying that. So I tried the next best thing, which is that you print the positive of your shape. So in my case, I printed the robot, and then you put a little bit of um, talcum powder or cornstarch on as a release agent onto some clay, and you press the robot into the clay and build up the walls around the robot and then take the robot out. You now have the inverse shape of your robot, so working as a press mold, but made from clay. And if you bisque fire the clay, it's still quite porous, so it works a bit like plaster. Now, obviously, you can't do something like slip casting in it because it's not that absorbent, but when it comes to plastic clay, it is absorbent enough that you can press the clay into the bisque fired mold and the clay will release quite readily even without adding cornstarch or, or um, talcum powder so that's what i ended up doing it took me a couple of goes to figure out the best way of doing it but this was what i found worked the best and the the one thing that i would say if you're gonna do something like this is if you leave the foot end open rather than pressing all the clay all the way around the robot it's much easier to make the flat base for it to stand on so what i do is i take a clay sausage and i press it tightly into the bisque mold square off the bottom to give it a foot and then it should come out relatively easily and now you have a test tile with a robot design on it completely unnecessary but i think it makes test tiles that little bit more fun and i'm enjoying having something that i can make them with relatively easily. That is the project that I've been contemplating for a while now and I might at some point do it properly and 3D print the shape and then use silicon so I can produce plaster molds and then I could even slip cast them if I wanted but at the very least I could get a, a cleaner impression and have it release better. Uh, but for now this bisqued clay works perfectly well so that's what I'll be using. And having made a batch of these, they are far more fun than my previous test tiles. So the 3D printer is a relatively small one compared to most other 3D printers you'll see. So it's small and light and tucks away very easily, which is nice. Um, obviously that means it's limited in its print capacity. Actually for all the projects that I was doing, that didn't turn out to be much of a limitation. There are a few different ways of getting your designs onto the printer. Download an app and send them there via the cloud, or you can plug your computer directly into it. I didn't actually use either of those. I just used the SD card transfer because that was more convenient for me. I prefer not to put devices on my Wi-Fi if I don't have to. And I like the fact that I can just put it on an SD card and keep the printer off the internet. It still works perfectly well. It's got a, a nice simple interface for printing direct from the card. And I had no issues with that whatsoever, but there is the option to do it remotely via the app and they have their own library of printable files in the app as well, if you wanted to do it that way. the the device itself is 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters and the print area is 10 by 10 by just over 10 um, and you get everything you need to get started it comes with a little bit of filament but actually 100 grams has been more than enough to do all the testing that i've been doing with plenty to spare so 100 grams will get you started the process of printing with it is pretty straightforward they recommend a slicer which is a program that takes the 3D model and turns it into the, the layers that the printer will need to print. And basically it's the instructions that the printer would use. And the slicer is very basic and works well. I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. It's designed for the printer, so it knows the size of the print bed and it comes in with 
the specs that they think work best and I had no issues with it on its default setting. You just stick your model in, and position it how you want it, slice it, and then you save that code. Now in my case, I was saving it to the SD card, and then I put the SD card into the printer, navigate very quickly using the dial to the print file, and press print, and off it goes. Generally wants to print a raft first, so it does a wider layer for the model to stick to, and then attaches the model to that, which seemed to work perfectly well less likely that the model will come loose while it's printing while still allowing it to release easily from the print bed i think that's probably recommended and i did that with everything and it worked then it will build up the layers layer by layer now obviously that means that you can't have huge overhangs because it goes layer by layer and if it gets halfway up the print and then has to jump miles out sideways that could be a bit of a problem and then once it's done printing you take the removable magnetic print bed out and you just bend it slightly to release the model and it just pops off and it's done it's good to go as it is so very easy to work with i found it so much easier to get started than my resin printer and it's so much more fun as well all in all it was a very nice straightforward printing experience and I'm really pleased with how the projects have worked. There are quite a few different options for what you could do if you wanted to incorporate 3D printing into clay. And just the act of finding core models and printing them is quite fun in itself. You can definitely go more complicated. There are some people doing great projects using just standard PLA prints of a printer directly into plaster, like Pottery by Kent. And I know Kenny at Turn Studios is attempting that at the moment too it's not something i've tried yet but it does look like it can work with the right design so you don't need to work with some silicon you can just print something if you design it correctly you'll be able to pour plaster directly onto it and hopefully get the thing back out of the plaster which is always the challenge but yeah all in all fun printer fun project and i'm really happy with my new robot testiles i think they'll probably be the ones that i use for most things from now on they take a fraction longer than my very quick test tiles, but they're a lot easier than my slipcast test tiles, and they're more fun. So thanks again to WeFun or Antina for sending me the printer and letting me try all this stuff. If you think there are any other projects that you think I should try with my printer to incorporate into clay, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to, to try new projects. I'll do a follow-up video if anything works.